Many times when people teach about healing, they talk about it being the right of the believer, and they talk about how to receive healing. But after a believer has received their healing, it's also important to know how to hold on to the healing. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Get ready. Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil with Neil Reyes Ministries, and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Walk. Today, we're going to be talking about how to hold on to your healing. Again, the topic of today's teaching is how to hold on to your healing. I want to open up in prayer, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father God, I come before you and thank you for everyone who's watching today. Lord, I thank you that as they're watching that this is a timely message. It's a message of hope for them and a message of instruction, a message that will build them up and lift them up right where they're at. Lord, I speak that any situation they're facing right now, especially in the areas of health, where their health is concerned, whether that's on the health of the spirit, health of the soul, health of the body, whatever situation they may be facing today, whatever it is that they're looking at, Lord, I thank you that they're able to stand on your word and know that they know that they know that they know that you are their supreme physician, that healing is their right as a believer, and that you've already provided it for them 2,000 years ago on the cross. I speak that they are healed, that they are whole, and that they are blessed in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that today's teaching is going to minister to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, I'm so thankful that you're able to join us today as we talk about God's Word. One of the things that we're speaking about is we've been spending the last several weeks on the subject of healing. And as we've been talking about healing, our first teaching we did in this series was four ways to receive healing. Now that's not it. That, that doesn't mean that there's only four ways to receive healing. The Bible outlines many ways to receive healing. But there are four primary ways in the Word to receive healing. If you haven't watched those videos, then I invite you to go back and watch them. In addition to that, we followed that up with a two-part series on how to minister healing. Now, as we talk about how to minister healing, one of the things we spoke about is that as believers, if we leave the responsibility of healing the body of Christ as the sole responsibility of the pastors and elders of the church, then as the body of Christ, we're not going to finish our work here on earth. The fact is that there are many, many people who need healing, both non-believer and believer alike. So again, both non-believer and believer both need healing. But not everybody will go to the pastors or elders of a church to help ask them to help them with healing. And so it is the body's responsibility to minister healing to others. Well, today we're taking our next step in advancement in this teaching topic, and today what we're teaching about is how to hold on to your healing. When I was before the Lord on this series and praying about, Lord, what is it that you'd have me teach to your people? What areas do you need them to be built up in? What topics do you need them to learn? He explained to me that he wanted me to teach them how to hold on to their healing. Man, when he said that, it really resonated with me on the inside. Because I will tell you as someone who has operated in this anointing of ministry for quite some time, that it's oftentimes you'll see in church circles and just different circles, you'll see where people will go to a church service or they'll find someone on the street, someone ministering to them, and they'll receive a divine healing. I'm talking about a divine encounter with the supernatural, a divine encounter with God Almighty. They'll feel the hand of God come upon them. Whatever sickness, whatever illness, whatever symptom they were facing disappears, and they receive their healing. 
But as they receive their healing, a short while later, the healing seems to lift and the sickness comes back. Now, that's not the case in every situation, but that does happen from time to time. And so I remember earlier on in my ministry asking Jesus, why is that? How is it that someone can come into a service, a church service or a meeting, and they can have the hand of God touch them so strong? They can hear His Word. It gets on the inside of them. They know it. They know that they know that they know that it is His will to heal. They'll receive their healing. They'll accept it. The symptoms literally go away sometimes in an instant. And yet sometime later... It's as though it returns. And I'm like, Lord, I know that your word is supreme truth. I know that your word is the word above every word. I know your name is the name above every name. But why is it that believers sometimes lose their healing? And what he explained to me is that believers need to be taught how to hold on to their healing. Sometimes it resonates so strong with an individual, there's no way you or the devil can ever convince them that that, healing, that that sickness is ever going to come back on them. But in other cases, you'll have someone who's strong in the moment. I'm going to say that again. In other cases, you may have someone who's strong in the moment, but later on, they get weak. In fact, as we talk about that, one of the things we want to talk about is when we talk about strong in the moment, The Word tells us that, you know, even when Abraham was trying to sow his seed, the the devil, and we refer to as the devil, but the ravens and stuff came to devour his seed. When that Word is sown, the Word, the precious Word of God is sown into our heart, it's so important for us to accept that as truth. But it's not enough just to accept it as truth. We must remain guarded over it. And when the ravens or the distractions or the thoughts of the enemy come to try to devour that or steal that, we have to defend that and hold that off from our heart and know that this is ours to hold on to. This is such an important lesson for us to know as a body of Christ. And so as we talk today about how to hold on to your healing, the number one thing the Lord referenced me to, the number one thing He impressed upon me on the inside was teach them about their words. Teach them about their words and how they're using them. Teach them to guard their mouth, guard their heart by guarding their mouth. And so I want to share with you that your words have a big part to play. I'm going to say that again. In your healing, your words have a big part to play. You know, when you receive healing, I said it earlier, sometimes the healing is instant, just like that. Any symptom you're going through, any sickness, any disease, gone, just like that. But in other cases, you may not feel very healed, but the healing is there. The seed of healing, the Word of God, has been planted on the inside. The hope and the peace of that healing has been planted on the inside. And the more you water that healing, the more you water that seed with the Word of God, that seed will burst open, it'll shoot and take root, and it'll be grounded within your life. That is such an important principle. You know, one of the things it tells us in God's Word is that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So you've got to be guarded as a believer on what you're allowing to go into your heart. I'm going to say that again. As a believer, you've got to be guarded over what you allow in your heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And when you speak, no one has the ability to speak and not hear with their inner ear what their words say. You know, sometimes when we're talking about print, uh, the different uh, soul gates and ear gates and, you know, eye gates and mouth gate and stuff like that, there's three gates to your soul, your eye gate, your ear gate, your mouth gate. When we're teaching that, sometimes we talk about how everyone has an outer ear, but they also have an inner ear. And, and a quick example of that is if you speak to people all day long, but you've never heard the sound of your own voice and you ever leave a voicemail for somebody, and later on they play that where you can hear that, oftentimes people, when they hear their voice for the first time, they're like, wow, that's what I really sound like? Because their outer ears never heard what their voice sounds like. It's their inner ear that's hearing them. And no one has the ability to speak out of their mouth and block their inner ear from hearing what they have to say. So what happens is when you speak, your ear hears it, and it waters that heart. 
And whatever's in the heart, whatever's in abundance in the heart, well, you'll speak out of your mouth and your ear hears it. And it can create a vicious cycle, and I call it vicious, if what you're spewing out is garbage. You know, we've talked about it in other teachings that garbage out means garbage in. Again, garbage out means garbage in. So you've got to be careful with that. But when it's the Word of God that's in your heart, and that it's in abundance, and you speak that out of your mouth, you're watering that seed. And you speak it out, and you're watering that seed. And just like seeds in the natural, when you plant a seed in the natural, the first thing it does is it bursts open, and the roots come out. And what do the roots do? They shoot down. They shoot down looking for water, because water helps to sustain them with life. And it tells us in God's words that rivers of living water shall flow out of your belly. Some translations say out of your heart, but rivers of living water shall flow out of your belly. So what happens is when that seed's planted in your heart and the seed cracks open and the roots shoot down, they're shooting down for the living water. And that living water didn't say living water of only good things. It said living water, meaning that its purpose is to bring life to whatever type of root connects with it. So if you're listening to bad, if you have bad seed in your heart, it's going to connect to that living water and it's going to grow. But if you have good seed in your heart, those roots are going to grow down, connect to that living water, and you're going to have good root in your heart. That's the difference of sometimes dealing with a foothold to a stronghold when you're talking about dealing with negative things or things of the enemy. We're talking about dealing with God's word and accepting it into our heart. And when it's in our heart, we must stand guarded over what we hear. That brings me to my first thing. And my first thing I want to talk to you about is that you're never to go by feeling or emotion when it comes to healing. I'm going to say that again. You're never, ever, ever, ever to go by feeling or emotion or sight when it comes to your healing. The fact is, as believers, we're not called to be led by our feelings. We're not called to be led by our emotions. And we're not to walk by sight. The Word says we're to walk by faith and not by sight. And we're not to be led by our emotions. We're to be led by our spirit. Why? Well, in our previous teachings, we backed up that you're a three-part being. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. Again, you're a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. You are a spirit that has a soul, and your soul is made of three things. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And your mind, will, and emotions are not supposed to lead your spirit. Your spirit leads your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. And your spirit that has a soul lives in a body. Meaning that you've got to sometimes tell your body to line up in Jesus' name. Body, line up to my soul. Soul, line up to my spirit. And spirit, line up to the spirit and word of God. That's when we're walking by faith and not by sight. I want to take you to our first scripture we're going to read today. And this is out of Romans 10, 17. I'm going to read it to you out of the King James Version. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now this is a valuable principle, and I want to show this to you. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now if you've taken any type of problem-solving classes in high school, or especially college, you'll know that sometimes when they take you through math, problem-solving classes, oftentimes certain words equal certain symbols in math. And the word and always means a plus sign. That means it's in something in addition to. A plus sign is something in addition to. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, meaning there's a qualifier there. This is what it is. Whatever you're listening to will build your faith in that specific area. I'm going to say that again. Whatever you're listening to will build your faith in that specific area. That's why Romans 10, 17 says that, So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Meaning faith comes by hearing, which whatever you're listening to is going to feed your faith in that area. So when it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, it's telling you that your faith is going to be built by what you're listening to. But... Focus and listen to the Word of God so that when the other voices try to come in, the other noise from the world, you're guarded against that. And you're guarding that heart because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's the hearing of the Word of God that you listen to regularly that builds you up, that helps protect you and bless you, and will build that healing inside of you. 
I want to take you to something. If you are listening to a negative report, please listen to this. If you are listening to a negative report, your faith in the negative report will grow. If you're listening to God's report, meaning God's word, your faith will grow in his good report. In his good news, you know, it tells us in the word that, that to preach the gospel to all the world, the word gospel means good news. Well, what's the gospel? Depends what your need is at the time. Yes, the gospel definitely is about salvation. No doubt about that. But the gospel can also be good things in other areas too. If you're in lack or debt, then gospel would be good news about finances or about provision, how to come out of that. If you're sick or ill or have some type of disease, then good news gospel speaking about God's will to heal and your right as a believer to walk in healing. That's good news in that situation. If you're having struggle in your relationships or your marriage is in trouble, then gospel's good news that teaches you around that to help build you up and edify you. Edification and exhortation. Exhortation lifts a person up. Edification builds a person up. It's so important to understand the principles of God's word. I'm going to read this to you again. If you are listening to the negative report, your faith in the negative report will grow. If you are listening to God's report, God's word, your faith will grow in his good report, his good news. Now, the next thing I want to take you to is a scripture out of Mark 4:24. So we're going to go to Mark 4:24 and this is out of the AMPC meaning the Amplified Classic Edition. So again, the Amplified Classic, Mark 4:24. It says, and he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. You know, I'm going to tell you that that speaks a lot right there. We have to be careful what we're listening to. Because the measure of what we're listening to will be the measure that is met unto us. In other words, the measure that is given unto us. In other words, whatever you're spending your time listening to, whatever you're building your thought around, that is going to be measured back to you. In other words, you're going to reap a harvest for what you're spending your time listening to. Now, as we talk about that, I want to share a story with you about someone who was, uh, this is a situation that happened to me many years ago. This was with a very good friend of mine at the time. One day, my wife and I were out having breakfast. I believe it was on a weekend. And as we're having breakfast, we were eating at a restaurant called IHOP. If you're not familiar with them, they're kind of like a Denny's, but for the most part, we like them for breakfast. So I'm there having breakfast with her one day. It's a very busy day. And I get this phone call. And as I get this phone call, I answer it. And I can barely understand the person on the other side. Now, I knew who it was because of the caller ID, but I could barely understand them in the restaurant. And I could barely understand what they were saying. So I said, hang on, hang on real quick. And I told my wife, give me a second. I go outside the restaurant. And as I go outside, I get on the phone. I said, hey, what's up? And the reason why I can barely understand them is because they're crying. And they're crying hard. This person was crying and in tears, and as I'm speaking to him, this is someone who I was mentoring in the faith, someone who was a very good friend to me, like family, and as I'm talking to him, he starts heaving and crying on the phone, and I said, hey, brother, hey, slow down and tell me what's wrong. What's going on? And he starts telling me about this situation where his older sister had uh, recently gone to the doctor. Actually, I say recently, but a couple months prior to that, and they had diagnosed her with cervical cancer. She didn't want to share it with anyone, though. She didn't share it with any of her family. She didn't share it with her mom, her dad. She didn't share it with uh, him, who was her brother. She didn't share it with anybody. She kept it private. And I can understand and respect that. But this thing was gnawing at her and eating at her on the inside. You see, she had a negative report from the doctor. And while I understand being guarded and not sharing it with anybody, the devil made her feel like an island unto herself that she couldn't share it with anybody. And so finally one day it builds up so much on the inside that she reaches out. She does basically what I refer to as a spiritual vomit on her mom. She drops it on her mom, tells her mom what's going on. Her mom and her dad are not believers at this time. She's not a believer at this time, but her brother is. Well, what does the mom do? The mom gets off the phone with her, and the first thing she does is she knows to turn to someone who is a man of God. She turns to her son. Praise God for being a person of faith when your family needs you. Sometimes your family may ridicule you for your faith if they don't have that same faith level in their life, but praise God they'll know where to turn to in the day of trouble. That being said, they turn around and they reach out to him, and as they did, he hears this, but it devastated him. And all he's thinking about is all the negative things. The thoughts that came crashing down on him are all the negative that's going to happen to her if this thing doesn't get resolved. So he turns around, he calls me, 
And the first thing I did is sympathize them with him and started crying with them. No, that's not at all what I did. <laughs> I didn't sympathize at all. Sympathy keeps people in the place or condition they're at. Now I'm going to say that again. Sympathy keeps people in the place or condition where they're at. As believers, we're not to show sympathy towards people. We're to show compassion. Now, that's a very different thought than people sometimes have. In fact, they'll even think that that sounds rude by me saying we're not to show sympathy. But the reason why we're not to show sympathy is because sympathy keeps a person in their situation. Sympathy says, I understand. Let me tell you about this time it happened to me. I understand. I know this time it happened to this person and this person, and this was the bad situation that happened. I understand. You're not to sympathize with someone. You're to comfort them. You're to cover them in comfort. And so what I did is I said, brother, and, I, and I'm searching on the inside, Lord, what do you want me to tell this gentleman? And the Lord deals with me. And so I get the word and I speak to him. I said, brother, I understand the situation that's going on. First of all, let me say that I'm sorry to hear that. But brother, why are you crying? And when I said that, it jarred him out of his thought. Just like that, it jarred him out of his thought. He goes, what do you mean? Now, he didn't get offended with me. He listened to me. He said, what do you mean? And I said, brother. We know God's got this. We know God can handle this and take care of this. Why are you crying? And he thinks about it for a second. I start feeding him some scriptures. And what did I do? I stirred up what was already inside him. What was inside him was not fear. Fear was trying to get inside him. I stirred up the word of God that was there. And as I stirred up that word of God, he comes out of it. He says, you know exactly right, brother. You're exactly right. God does have this. So I say, brother, here's what we're going to do. I want you to reach out to her and see if she'll be open to me praying with her. And if she's open to me praying with her, you let me know when and we'll go by and minister to her. Now, as I tell him that, he says, all right, brother, I'm going to let you know. And a couple weeks go by and one day I get a call late in the evening. It's about almost nine o'clock in the evening, I think. And he calls me up and he says, brother, I know it's late, but my sister reached out to me. She was open to us coming and praying with her, but she's got a doctor's report the next day. And today's our day to meet with her can you come over and talk with me so we can pray with her? And I said, absolutely. So I turn around and I go to her house with them. We sit there and we minister with her for a while. And as we're sitting there ministering to her, the Lord gives me some different words of knowledge for her. Now, when I'm talking about word of knowledge, we're talking about the gifts, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of the gifts of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in the Revelation gifts is a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is when God gives you a specific word about a person's past or present that you could not know anything about without Him giving it to you. Now, as he gave us this word of knowledge, one of the things we're doing is I'm talking to her. And I started talking to her about things that have happened in her past. I'm explaining to her that she's a three-part being, a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. And I'm explaining to her that there's three different levels a person can receive a healing on. You see, she thought we were there to talk to her about her cervical cancer diagnosis. But that's not what we were there to do. We were there to talk with her about what God was doing inside of her on a deeper level. Now, as we went ahead and went and spoke with her, one of the things we talked about was that there were some things that God had showed me had happened in her past. And so I started ministering healing to her on the level of spirit. I started ministering to her healing on the level of the soul, her mind, her will, and her emotions. Man, when we do that, she is just bursting out in tears. But before I started with this, I asked her brother to wait outside for a second because I knew that it would hinder her on some of the things she had to get off of her chest. So I turned around and I prayed with her. He went to the other room and I was praying with her. And as I started ministering to her and started explaining these things, God touched her right where she was at. And as God touched her right where she was at, words started flowing through me about things there was no way I could know about, even things her family didn't know about. And all this hurt that she had inside, all this hurt that was built up, broke that day and it came out. You know, it tells us in God's Word that we find forgiveness when we ask God for forgiveness, but we find healing when we confess to another brother or sister. And as this spiritual stuff that was bothering her came out, all that garbage came out of her life. And healing started inside of her that night. But it started on the inside and worked its way out. You see, I gave her Word to sow the Word inside. And then it stirred that Word when God gave me the Word of knowledge, and then it brought it out. Well, as we were talking about that, I give her this word of knowledge about everything that's going on within her life and that, that she's had in the past and how God wants to take that from her. Now, I want to explain something to you, and this is so important. As believers, we are not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed. I'm going to say that again. As believers, we are not the sick 
trying to get healed. We are the healed. When you're talking about learning to hold on to your healing, you have to understand exactly what that means. You have to understand what it means to hold on to your healing. Well, after I then spoke those things to her and she'd received the healing of her spirit and the healing of the soul, he then gave me a word of wisdom for her. Now, the word of wisdom out of the revelation gifts of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit or the ministering gifts, the word of wisdom is a word about her future. That's a word of her future, something I obviously I couldn't know unless God gave me. And the word of wisdom he gave me was that she was going to go to her doctor's office the next day. And when she did, they were going to go and take her test and they were going to hold her new test compared to her old test. And they're going to say, this is not right. Something's broken in the machine. We need to turn around and do this again. And they're going to try and run it again and run it again and run it again. But they're going to try to convince her that that thing is still supposed to be there. But that's going to be her understanding to know that God touched her. And what was is no more. See, Romans 4.17 tells us we have the ability to call things as they, not as they are, but as they're meant to be. Again, we have the ability to call things not as they are, but as they're meant to be. So I give her this word of wisdom. She's now fully built up. She's got the word of God inside of her. She's got her healing of her spirit, her healing of her soul. We stirred the word from the inside out. And now she has the spoken word to know that when the doctors speak, no matter what happens, she stands on that healing. Well, she turns around, I lay hands on her, she receives her healing, and as I lay hands on her and she receives her healing, the very next day she goes to the doctor, she goes to the doctor, and as she goes to the, them, that exactly what the Lord told me would happen, happened in the exact steps. She shows up, they take her new test, they pull her old ones, and they say, we don't understand this. And they pull it up so they can show her. They said, this scan here shows no cervical cancer, no hint that you've ever had it. This one here, you can see it, and they show her where it's at. This one, no cancer. So they run her through a couple different tests. They then even send her to some other locations because the equipment must be broken. <laughs> and as they send her to that, they can't find this thing anywhere. They can't find it anywhere because it was gone. You see, as believers, we're not the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed. We're walking in divine healing. That's who we are. God removed it from her in a way that the doctors couldn't explain. That's what it means to hold on to your healing. Guys, we want to thank you for taking the time to stop by and grow with us as we learned about healing. It's so important as a believer to remember that healing is a right of every believer and it is God's will to heal. Guys, as always, we want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you, and so do we. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and grow with us today. If you would like more information or would like to support or partner with Neil Reyes Ministries, please visit our website at neilreyes.com, or you can mail us at Neil Reyes Ministries, P.O. Box 586, Fort Worth, Texas, 76052. Today's episode of Champions Walk was brought to you by the faithful partners and supporters of Neil Ways Ministries, who are joining us in our assignment of waking up the church, setting the captives free, and together we're reaching the lost.